Hurricane Milton is pounding Florida with violent winds and potentially deadly flooding. It struck the state's Gulf Coast late Wednesday as a Category 3 hurricane with winds exceeding 200 kilometers an hour. The storm's eye came ashore near Sarasota, south of its expected landfall in the heavily populated Tampa Bay area. It's cut power to more than two million homes and businesses and spawned tornadoes that left a trail of destruction. Millions of people were earlier told to leave their homes for safety just two weeks after Hurricane Helene slammed into the area. And now we can cross straight over to Florida where that hurricane, Milton, is slamming into the coast. Uh, with us now, joining us from Sarasota in western Florida, is meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Matthew, are you with us? I am, and, and I know my shot might look a little bit silly right now. When I tell you this is the only source of light around, this was an emergency exit light that I found in the parking lot. Uh, the entire building right now is without power. Actually, the entire uh, region in Florida is without power. Several million people are in the dark at this hour. I encountered winds of 160 to 170 kilometers per hour where I was. A bench from a rooftop of a skyscraper narrowly missed my vehicle earlier on. We had traffic lights and road signs and pieces of debris and even parts of people's roofs whipping by through the streets. And I was actually parked in a way to avoid the storm surge, but the water continued to rise in the streets. So again, a very severe storm. Uh, in addition, there were tornadoes earlier on across much of Southern and Eastern Florida, including a killer tornado in Fort Pierce that lofted debris to get this roughly 10 kilometers high, that killed at least one person and may be among the strongest tropical cyclone-related tornadoes ever spawned in the United States. And it's still not over yet. We've seen prolific rainfall. Uh, Tampa, the, that area, St. Petersburg, got 5.09 inches of rain in just one hour's time, so roughly 13 centimeters. They saw nine inches in three hours, which is deemed a once-in-a-thousand-year rain event. So pretty much every hazard has been maxed out on the scale. I understand that the hurricane has now been downgraded to a category one storm. Does that really mean anything given what you've just described? Yeah, so that, that's a really good question. You know, the, the hurricane itself is weakening in terms of the wind speed on the tropical element, but one strange thing happening with this system is something called a sting jet. And I know that sounds like a made up term, but it's a real thing. Basically, this thing is transitioning from a tropical cyclone to a non-tropical cyclone. And what that means is that dry air is infiltrating the backside. Well, as that dry air undercuts cloud cover and rain and moisture, all that rain and moisture falls into the dry air. It dries up. And so that kind of air in that part of the storm dries up. Dry air is heavier, so it sinks towards the ground. And it pulls down very strong momentum, very strong destructive winds with it, helping that to reach the surface. So ordinarily, the backside of a hurricane is not nearly as bad as the former side. In this case, uh, we're seeing significant winds hours after the eye has passed, largely thanks to the sting jet, which is incredibly unusual to happen at this low latitude. You know, to get a storm transitioning into Florida is very weird. Many people are looking at this storm and remembering, of course, the one that just hit. So this storm is expected to be the worst in a century, coming right after Hurricane Helene. To what extent, Matthew, can we say that these storms are being fueled by climate change and that they are increasing? Well, that, you know, it's kind of a nuanced answer I'll, I'll give. It, it's tricky because it is peak hurricane season. We did know it would be a very busy season. Uh, September, October are the peak months, and we have had unlucky stretches before with back-to-back -back storms. Back in 2004, for example, we had Hurricane Charlie, which hit us a Category 4 in Fort Myers, Florida, back on August 13th of that year. Then we had Jean and Francis, all those storms hitting within about a six-week period, so Florida was hard hit back then, and they're unlucky again right now. That said, storms are becoming wetter thanks to human-induced climate change. They're exhibiting much more fast, rapid intensification, and the sea levels are kind of rising as well a little bit. And so all that can contribute to how bad a storm is. It's not going to make a storm, but it's going to contribute to the storm. And we know the Gulf of Mexico right now is several degrees above average, which does bear the fingerprint of climate change. So hotter waters, more storm fuel, and a stronger storm. Extraordinary conditions uh, you're up against there. Matthew, do take care of yourself. Meteorologist Matthew Capucci in Sarasota, Florida.